Blue Valley. Uh, thank you, Mark. I hope that the, the portal is also in English, not only in Estonian, because we can have a problem in, in registering a company in Estonian. Okay, now we move to two speakers, two Spanish colleagues from the Colegio Registradores. Uh, the program is with a little bit changed. Uh, Luis Laos will be helped by uh, Iñaki later on. But first is uh, Luis Laos, which is the Chief Information Officer of the Colegio Registradores. If I read this uh, bio, it seems that he understands the value of technology <laughs> in corporate transformation. Correct? Seems so. <laughs> he has been working in the past with, uh, as a technical background. In the past, has been working uh, for MasterCard uh, in the area of security strategy related to the digital mobile payment. So, uh, Luis, the floor is yours, please. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Vito. Uh, thanks, Andres. Um, uh, it seems that uh, uh, in the time this decision will last, uh, uh, one company is created in Estonia, so that is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Congrats for that. Uh, when I started to prepare this session, um, I realized that um, considering the topic, the main topic for this, ah, thanks, is, uh, is technology for providing reliable services for that. And, and if, you, if you check the, the, the title for this session, is contribution to the digital economy. Is that something missing here? The link with uh, technology uh, <laughs> actually is just the opposite. Yep. The goal for this session is focus most on business strategy as a means to define the technology architecture for that. And the way we are going to review the strategy, uh, we'll take a look at what is uh, all the main principles and requirements coming from the Europe 2020 initiative for that. At this put in many requirements for the digital economy. Yep. And then we'll put in context against what is uh, uh, expected and provided and the contribution from the Spanish business register for that. In order to put it, uh, are we at the level is expected from the uh, European Commission? And then uh, uh, taking this strategy is needed to take a look at what, is, what are we heading to? What is the next steps? the new requirements, the new projects, with the, the new initiatives for that. And then, are we ready to meet those new challenges? And then, we think so. And the way to get to that point, we think the best way is taking an open government approach. Okay. What is said? Let me quote what is said by the Europe 2020. Well, if we pick the main uh, uh, principles behind these initiatives is enhancing the use of online services and digital technologies. That for sure, within the next years, will have a clear impact on the technology supporting business registers. Why? What is not digital, it doesn't provide value to the users and the citizens for that. And uh, here, there's even an uh, uh, index. We'll take a look what is this index about later on, but there are f five main uh, dimensions for that. Connectiv connectivity, human capital, internet, okay, but let's put a focus on digital public services. Um, what is needed here? It said that it's clear. What is the only one way to improve efficiency here? Is uh, modernization and digitization of all our services. We need to change the way we think about the services we provide to the citizens. <coughs> and how is Spain performing according to this dimension? Well, digital uh, public services, uh, this is uh, coming from the European Commission, it's saying that we rank in a very good position at this point. Six out of the, all the countries. And even, we are improving even faster than the rest of the countries here. 
And let's put a focus here why we are, what is this increase on this? There are two clear figures to take a look. The number of users and the number of services. It's needed to put more services on the market, but if we put services and there are no users using those services, there's no value provided for that. So there's a need to review how our services are performing in order to align then what is really needed, what is actually needed by the society. And then, how, what is the contribution from the Spanish business register to this um, uh, index on that point? From, remember, in mind, users and services. Here, this is a journey. We started a long, long time ago, 1999. It was the first time it was possible to obtain information by electronic means from the uh, business register. Yeah. But many other services came after for that. We started as a certification authority, service provider, now a trust service provider in uh, 2002. Uh, it was possible uh, just one year later to send information to the registry to register and deposit information. For sure, uh, again, one year later, we joined the EBR network for that. And in 2006, it was the time, was, it was uh, the first time in Spain that it was possible to send many information, many documents to the registry to register them. No. Not only getting information, but register information. Three years, 2009, XBRL, later my colleague will discuss and present more information about this. It was an option to present that information, to submit in that format uh, to the registry. But the last two initiatives is quite interesting here because it's not specifically related to the business reality domain. But it's interesting because due to the trust provided by the Spanish business register, the government is assigning, assigning new functions, new responsibilities in order to put information on the, the trust provided by the registers here. One is the Nationality File Management Project, even received an award for that, and the later, uh, it was designated to operate the pre-law. So now in Spain, the business register is responsible for assigning the legal entity identifiers to the company needed to, to have one. Yeah. Uh, put in Two dimensions again, users and services. Services, we, uh, we take a look at that point. What about users? This, you can check here the huge increase in the number of users using our electronic services. In uh, 2003, only seven, 67 users <laughs> decided to use on the platform. But in this year, we've got a huge amount of users decided to use the electronic means to exchange information <coughs> for the register. But is that enough? Uh, never is enough. Never is too much. There are many new challenges still to come here. And it's needed to consider a different approach to solve all these new challenges. And uh, even coming from the European Commission, there's a very good and, and really interesting uh, approach to solve this. It's taking an open government approach for that. Let me review the main principles behind this. Citizens and public administration have better access to information. The business registry must be able to put that information within the window of opportunity that the business needed. Must be online, it must be digital, 
and it must be at any time and anywhere using any device for that. Government uh, is needed to incorporate feedback. How do we provide those services to the citizens? We need to incorporate the, that feedback in order to promote continuous improvement for that. It's not just put in the service and wait what is waiting here. We need to get what the citizens really need from that perspective, not only the government. What do they need? We need to put that in the design of the delivery of the public services. We, we are many, many say, think, thinking only to provide services to public administrations, companies. What about the rest? Um, we need to monitor, monitoring those public services. The new challenge here. Yeah. Um, did even this, uh, within, within two weeks, they are going to have a meeting uh, in the European Commission to review all the objectives for the new e-government action plan with the 2020. And if we check, this is a quote from that plan, and it's saying, making the interconnection of business races a reality within two years, the bridge project. So, taking into consideration the business strategy just with this point, for sure will have a clear impact on all the business registers here. We need to be able to send and change information in the same way as we are doing here in Spain. Creating an index, a same protocol format, service level agreement for that in order to promote interoperability. Extending and integrating, no more is needed just having our own portals here at the national level, Estonia, Spain, or whatever. We need to put it in context in just one portal. That is called what is e-justice portal. So whatever initiative must be able to connect that information into a single portal for that. Um, um, AIDAS, that's for sure. Um, interoperability uh, related to electronic signatures for that. Another key point here. So, um, Greece and um, electronic signatures, those are the major challenges to cope with within the next years. Um, from my point, I don't have much time, so thanks so much for that. Um, good.